A few weeks ago, I uploaded a video talking about whether or not historical axes more often had hammer backs or spikes. If you haven't seen that video, don't worry about it. I'll post a link at the end of this video. But in this video, I want to talk about the modern axe and whether or not a spike or a hammer would be more useful. But I have to create a situation in which we might use it. So let's say we are in a shit hits the fan situation. The government's taken over. We've been invaded. Um, economic collapse. People are going crazy. Whatever reason, we have decided that shit has hit the fan and we need to bug out. So we've bugged out to an isolated forest. We will need tools to build and maintain our home, tool or weapons or tools to hunt with, and weapons to fend off attacks from other humans or potential attacks. The first of those three things that I want to talk about is for hunting, and that's because there's not much to say about it. And that's because using an axe to hunt is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I'm sure there's probably some video out there somewhere of somebody killing something with an axe. But um, I would say as a general rule of thumb, stay away from the axe if you have like a spear or something. Especially since spears are extremely cheap and easy to make. If you have an axe, you can make a spear and it'd be much more effective for hunting. Um, yeah, I mean, hammer or spike, it doesn't really matter. Um, an axe just isn't that good for hunting. On to the next topic, as a tool. Um, axes in general, the blade, not even talking about the spike on the hammer, but the blade of an axe itself makes it extremely useful as a tool. It can be used to fell trees, um, cut up large pieces of wood into smaller, more manageable pieces of wood. It can be used to whittle or carve, or it can be used to gut and scan animals. Now, of course, how effective an axe is at each of these tasks varies greatly depending on the size of the axe, both in the handle and the head and the shape of the head. If you have a thinner blade, it's going to be better for your skinning and gutting animals because it's going to be a very fine cutter. However, if it's a really wide and thick head, it might be very good for splitting. Um, but as just kind of an all-purpose you know, general thing, it is useful for all of these tasks. As a tool, the hammer would also be an absolutely great accessory to an axe. Uh, the hammer could be used to pound in stakes that you could be used to make snares or set up a tent. It could be used to um, beat the ground, compacting the ground to make a good foundation for some sort of shelter. Or it can be used for something simple like cracking open nuts. The spike, however, has very few uses as a tool. One thing that it would be tremendous at, though, is breaking up the ground to make digging easier. So if you've got some hard compact ground, actually quite the opposite of what the hammer would be useful for. But if you've got um, potentially uh, sandy or just extremely compact dirt and you need to dig, say you're trying to put a post there for a shelter or something, um, the spike would be really useful for breaking up that dirt and making it more manageable to dig out with uh, a shovel or um, your hands. Now, um, you could do this with the axe blade too, but because the head of the axe is designed to be sharp, it's much, much thinner usually than the spike. Again, the exact uh, grinds on axe heads and spikes vary, but for the most part, it's thinner, which means it's more likely to take serious damage if you hit a rock while digging with it, um, which you are likely to hit some small rocks. Now, depending on the hardness of the metal, and if you're careful, the damage done to it is minor and can easily be sharpened out but the risk is a bit greater. Now for the final topic, as a weapon against humans. In an unarmored situation, the axe head, the spike, and the hammer would all be quite deadly and effective, with negligible differences between them. Where you start to see the differences between the hammer and the spike and a modern axe is when you start taking a look at armors. And since we're talking about the modern axe here, we're going to be looking at modern body armors as well. The first armor I want to take a look at is Kevlar. And against Kevlar, the spike would work tremendously. And that's because of the amount of power you get from swinging it. Now, this is a relatively short handled axe or hatchet or tomahawk, whatever you want to call it. But uh, even then, just the, that amount of extra leverage and the weight on this allows me to get some great velocity and power behind it and all that power gets focused on this tip and against that um, cut resistant and even stab resistant cloth I think this is going to do just nicely I think you're going to pierce it and I don't think you're going to have any trouble defeating it 
Now, exactly how easily you can um, defeat the Kevlar with a spike is going to vary on a couple of things. Um, one, simply what level of Kevlar. There's different levels that are rated for different um, sort of abuses. Um, the exact shape and size of your spike, um, a thinner, pointier spike is going to get through a lot easier. Some it's a little bit heavier, or not um, heavier, but a little heftier, something a little bit thicker. Um, while it would leave a bigger hole, it's more mass and material that you're trying to push through. So it's not going to penetrate quite as well. Um, the other thing is simply how hard you swing it. Um, and even actually potentially where you're aiming on the body. Because um, as I'll get to with the hammer, it tends to cushion a blow. It is, it is a cloth. It's soft. The human body is quite soft as well. So if you strike somebody in the gut, there's a lot of give there. I don't know if you guys can see this. But there's a lot of give in the stomach. So that's going to absorb a lot of the blow and a lot of the energy. However, if you were to hit them in the middle of the chest, that there's a sternum that's going to uh, not be able to absorb all of that pressure and you're going to be more likely to pierce. Now with the hammer, this is where the Kevlar um, is going to pretty much do its job, which the hammer isn't a piercing weapon by any means, obviously. The Kevlar is going to do quite well because it's going to be able to absorb the blow from that hammer. The next two armors are the steel and ceramic body armors. Now I'm talking about both of these at the same time because neither the hammer nor the spike or the axe head for that matter is going to be able to defeat these. They are simply too thick and too hard. They are designed to stop bullets after all. So while modern ceramic and steel body armors are going to be pretty much untouchable when it comes to uh, the majority of melee weapons in this analysis here, especially the hammer and the spike on the back of an axe, um, they do have one weakness, and that is that they are quite heavy. And that is, isn't a weakness in and of itself um, against the axe, but what that means is you can't have it everywhere. If you were to compare a modern body armor to a historical uh, plate armor, you would notice that the biggest difference being just the amount of coverage. Um, modern body armor covers the front, the back, and in some cases the sides. And that's because bullets are extremely hard to stop. So it takes a lot of material to stop that bullet. And if you were to strap that onto your arms, I'm sure we could do it, but your uh, mobility would be limited quite a bit um, and it would be heavy. The Army's IOTV, or Improved Outer Tactical Vest, weighs 30 pounds. Now the vest and the Kevlar in it only weighs about 10 pounds, but you've got two ceramic plates you also put in there, and each of those weigh about 10 pounds as well. Throw in your side plates, and I believe those weigh about 5 pounds each, so there's another 10 pounds. So even if you get the side coverage, you're at 40 pounds now. Imagine throwing that up onto a net guard, which would limit mobility, or arms, or legs. It'd get quite heavy, and because of that, we're limited to just protecting the most vital organs, which mostly reside within our torso, so we cover the torso. And um, something I don't think a lot of people realize about body armor is it's not as big as you think. Even for me, I, so when I wear a plate armor, um, modern plate, like a um, ceramic plate, not <laughs> medieval plate armor, um, I wear small. And it sits, I don't know if you can see this low, but it sits about um, just above my hip, and it only comes up to about mid-chest. So it actually comes closer to the collarbone height, but it is still quite small. That's so I can move my head and my neck and have movement. Now, if there's these other flaps, protective flaps that come up and help kind of protect the uh, neck from little bits of shrapnel, um, but they're not going to stop a direct hit from a bullet. Um, so they're already actually quite small, at least smaller than you might think. Um, and so if you're to, again, if you're to strap that onto everywhere, it'd be simply too heavy. So what that means in the, um, for an axe, um, whether it be hammer or spike or just the blade itself, is that simply don't aim there. There are plenty of other viable spots that you can hit on the body that isn't covered by the body armor. So in this situation, let's assume that um, the opponent is wearing either steel or ceramic um, body armor. They're wearing front and back plates and side plates. So that's pretty much all off limits. You've still got pretty good access to the neck um, unless they have uh, enough of like the collar to help protect them, but I think if you come at a downward angle, you'd still be able to get in there. 
Um, you've got the face, even if they're only wearing a uh, modern helmet, you've got the face. Um, you're probably not going to be able to get through that with an axe, um, a one-handed axe. With a two-handed axe, um, like a felling axe, maybe. Um, you'd have to hit them quite hard. Spike, maybe. Hammer, no. It might shake them up a little bit if you hit them with a hammer back of a spike. But it's not going to take them out of the fight. So what you need to do in this situation would be aim for armpits, groin, things like that. Places that can take them out of the fight that isn't, the ar or that isn't protected by armor. So in this situation, neither the hammer nor the spike are any more or less useful than the other. Going back to the unarmored situation is they're both quite effective. So what does that mean? Well, that means that as a weapon, the axe head is still probably your best bet, but your hammer or spike are equally useful. But your hammer is much more useful as a tool. So if you had the hammer, you would have a good weapon and a good tool. If you had the spike, you'd have a good weapon and kind of a tool. So the hammer makes it much more versatile against in a modern shit hits the fan situation if you take somebody who decides to wear hockey pads or some other sort of plastic and padded armor um i think your spike would probably do a little bit better there however i think the actual blade of the axe could handle that armor just fine so there's you're not really gaining anything by putting the spike on there you're just simply using the spike instead of the axe head and by putting a spike on there you're taking away from the versatility uh, from the tool side that you get out of a hammer. So in a modern setting, if you're going to choose an axe to bug out with, I would look at taking the hammer. This has been Modern Axe, Hammer or Spike. Thank you for watching.